So what Steve and I kind of sought out to do was to address the specific areas where we could apply skills analytics. And first, it starts by having all your data in one place, because when it's separate, when it's disparate, it's really cumbersome to start to get that together. So first, by pulling it together and then using that to empower kind of the pulse of the state, the enterprise-wide skills um, dashboard that starts to understand and map out where and what we are seeing. From there, we can start to progress a few layers forward, how each one kind of builds off of each other, that we now have kind of a skill supply. And we'll talk about that and what that might look like within reporting. And then with that supply, you can then see your demand, right? Where are gaps and how can we then start to be very targeted in that? And then we get this place of uh, talent mobility and optimization, where how are we bridging the gap between kind of the HR and talent perspective, and how are we using learning to bridge that and that data to bridge the gap to actually drive actionable strategy. And then, of course, using uh, search analytics, what are people looking for? What trends are we seeing? I know Steve has a good kind of uh, use case from his past in, in this specific area. So this is this is kind of our roadmap for today, and then we'll apply it, and then we can use that to kind of segue onto a few other areas, Steve. So Brandon, you, you talked about, and there's some key areas here, and I always like to, you know, my philosophy is starting simple. And when you start simple, you can layer on. And so Brandon mentioned some things here. And I, what I like to boil, uh, what I like to boil skills down to is simple supply and demand economics, right? Knowing what you need, knowing what you have, comparing those, closing those skill gaps. That's more or less skill strategy year one, but it'll help you progress and continue to layer complexity for your organization as you move forward. But if you think about you know, the conversation that when Brandon and I last presented three months ago, there was research that wasn't out. And again, I, I mentioned it earlier, but it's the research has come out on skills-based organizations and a lot of companies are paying attention to that now. It's no longer, we need to hire these roles because these roles have these skills. It's more about, we need to hire individuals with these skills to be able to do this work to help us drive our business forward. So. That's going to be a lot of the context as we look at the, uh, the the information today in the platform and to dive into some of those. And we'd also like to invite the, our audience to kind of think through that and maybe some of the questions you have or, or take away food for thought in. Now, if we're understanding needing the skills that we need to have to get the work done, how would we change that or how would we look at that differently or approach it differently for our organization? So, Brandon, back over to you. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And, and I think that allows us to kind of map out those types of questions, questions that you might have even heard this week in a, in a, in a team call or something like that. Because what we want to do is make it actionable, making it something that's tangible that we can start to map that out. And so that starts with some of the questions that we identified here. And we had mentioned before, and, and these are, we'll go over these very simply, but, oh, and Brandon, I think if we can go to one previously um, here, I think we may have skipped over one, but, and I think, and again, we're going to look at these more deeply, but just really understanding a global view of the skills that you have in your organization, I think that's step one. And then as you dive a little bit deeper, understanding those skill gaps, remember we'd mentioned skill supply and demand, you know, if you know how many skills you need and you understand how many skills you have, you can start looking at those gaps and how you close. And we'll dive into that a little bit more deeply. But then is your L&D organization meeting the needs of your workforce? If there are skill gaps, is your L&D organization closing those? And then more importantly, is your workforce using the learning that you're providing to help close those skill gaps? And then finally, how do you measure the, the talent mobility? And this is you know, you had the emergence of the learning experience platform and then that transition to, you know, over the last, I would say, five years, the emergence of the talent mobility platforms. And it was that, you know, the 70-20-10 model and the 70 portion of that, which is the experiences. And how do I find those experiences within my organization or through uh, short-term gigs, projects in order to build experiences one, that was one aspect of talent mobility, but then in addition to that, it's that career mobility to allow an individual, as they're gaining skills and experiences, to have more mobility across the company. And, and we all want to retain our best talent, and we don't want to see them leave to pursue a different position. So what we do is we provide them with the, the learning and skills to be able to do that, but then also give them opportunities to take on new roles, tasks, projects that fulfill them, and stay with the company longer so you're retaining that top talent. Yeah, I love that insight there, Steve, because that kind of starts to map out how the that bridge is built between those two sides of the organization. And so we'll use that to kind of segue to the platform specifically where we can start talking about the insights and questions that we'll start to answer. Mm -hmm.